Well, where do we want to draw the trunk? I think we should draw it in the center of the screen, right? So let's compute that. Uh, var center x equals canvas dot height. Uh, sorry, canvas dot width divided by two. Yeah, I got rid of the Fibonacci code. So center x is this. And then let's, uh, let's set these variables that we know we're going to need. So trunk height, I'm going to call it. The height of the first branch. So var trunk height is, let's make it, um, say, 50 pixels. And then what's another variable? The, um, the ratio, the branch length ratio. So var branch length ra ratio. Branch length ratio is, let's start by making each branch half the length of the previous one. So it's going to, two thirds? OK, fine. Two thirds. And what else? We need the angle, the branch angle. So var branch angle is. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a fraction of pi. So over two. So now let's draw the trunk. So c dot. Well, remember the, how to draw lines. So we can Google that, l drawing lines. It's, it's these functions, mo begin path, move to, line to, and close path. So it's c similar to drawing circles um, in a way. So c.begin path is the first thing we need to do. And then after we... So move to is like the beginning of the trunk, and then line to will be the end of the trunk. So we're going to make a line from where we move to to where we line to. So c dot move to, it's going to be x and y. Move to x, y. So the x, meaning the bottom of the trunk, will be center x. We want it to be in the middle. So move to center x, comma. What's y going to be? It's going to be at the bottom of the canvas. So it will be canvas.height. Remember, 0, 0 is at the upper left corner. So canvas.height. And then c.line2. The x is going to be the same. It's going to be a vertical line. So line to center x, comma, uh, canvas.height minus trunk length. So we've begun the path, and we've made the path. And so canvas.height is the bottom of the canvas. And then trunk length is the, uh, I mean, trunk height is the height of the first line. So this makes sense. So it'll be C dot. Um, to actually draw the line, I believe it's stroke. And we should call close path, although close path might not be totally necessary, but let's do it anyway. C dot close path. And then C dot stroke. So there it is. It's a small trunk. Yeah, let's make it bigger. So I'd say 100 pixels. So what we want to do now is draw another line that goes like right here. So we're going to want to draw another line. 
So let's just copy and paste this code for now. Duplication is generally bad, but to get it working, let's do this and then generalize it later. Oh, yeah. Good idea. It'll make the code uh, simpler. So let's make a function draw line. And so what arguments should draw line have? So it's just two points, right? X, Y, X, Y. So I'm going to call it X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Uh, well, so we're just going to make the graphics code less lines of code. And then the angle we'll deal with later. We'll compute the X and Y depending on the angle. So what, I'm, what I did is I moved that code inside the function. And now we're going to call the function draw line. And just to make things super clear, let's make variables. So like var x1 equals center x. And then inside of this code, as I'm moving these out, I'm going to replace these with the arguments. So this will be x1. var y1 equals canvas.height, and then replace canvas.height with y1 here. So it moved to x1, y1. That makes sense. And then down here, var x2 equals center x as well. And var y2 equals, what was it, canvas.height minus trunk height. And then inside the function, make it line to x2, comma y2. What? And then inside the call to draw a line, we need to pass it those, uh, those values. So x1, y1, x2, y2. So it has the same behavior. So we've just done a refactoring. We refactored the code by making a draw line function. So for the second one, what should it be? It should start where the other one ended. So we've de we've declared x1 and these stuff these things so we can just reuse them. So x1 equals well, it's also going to be center x. Uh, no, but we're gonna we're gonna make it eventually one function, so it'll be just be better to have it uh, looking like this later. And then y one is going to be the previous y two, right? So we can just say y two and um, x two. Now, what is x2 going to be? Now we're going to need some uh, trigonometry, because it's going to depend on the angle. I think what we're going to do is want to um, set this up and then call some recursive function that then calls itself inwardly. So let's set up that recursive structure now. So instead of draw line, make it um, make it draw tree. Yeah, make it draw tree. So it draws that. And then what we're going to do is call this to a certain uh, depth. As in the number of levels deep we go in terms of branching. And that's how we'll know to uh, stop drawing branches. So let's make that a variable up here too. Var um, branch depth, or branching depth, tree depth, var, what should it be? Depth. Branching depth. 
equals, let's just go two for now, as in it'll draw the trunk and then one set of branches. And then the way we manage this in recursion is uh, we pass this in as a parameter and then make another argument to the function depth. And then we call draw tree. So, oh, so we have to have the bottoming out condition. So if, if depth reaches zero, we should stop drawing trees. So if depth equals zero, then just return. Otherwise, so else, do this stuff. And then call draw tree. Draw tree, and then pass it depth minus one. And the minus one is really important, because otherwise you will end up with this infinite recursion, where it never stops uh, calling itself. And that'll, that'll just give you an error. Like, it's not as bad as an infinite loop, which will just, like, crash the browser. Um, so this is the general form. And then the, x, the points that we want to pass in here are going to be the points for the next branch down. So we're actually going to call this twice, but let's just call it, you know, once for each branch. But let's just call it once for now and get the math correct. So if we think about going down one level, the x1 and y1 for the next branch are going to be the x2 and y2 for the previous branch. So what we can do here is say uh, set x1 equals x2 and y2 equals sorry yeah y1 equals y2 so that will get these to be to be the correct number so now the challenge is to get these to be the correct numbers so we have this angle uh, branch angle and we have branch length ratio. So in order to, to, to figure out where this point should be, we need to know how long this segment should be. Right? So um, we need to know the length of this. So actually, <coughs> it would be useful to, to have that as another, mm, or would it? Yeah, let's let's pass that as another argument to the function um, length or branch length. Branch length. So the first branch length will be the trunk height, right? So pass that into the function and put a comma there. Uh, so it's a function called draw tree x1, y1, x2, y2, trunk height, depth. Oh, sorry, I, I added to the wrong thing. So that's inside of the function. But when we call it for the first time, that's what should be passed in, trunk height. So we've got the function definition, but then we're calling it for the first time with the trunk. And so we pass in trunk height. And so then now we have branch length. And the next branch length should be this previous branch length times the branch length ratio. So let's set that. Branch length equals branch length times branch length ratio. So we can't do times equals? Yeah, we could. Times equals. So now we have the length of the new branch. So x2 is equal to 
branch length. But remember, it's, we're gonna we're gonna be adding this to the previous x two. So it'll be actually x two plus branch length times the cosine of the um, branch angle So I think that's right. And so what's y2 going to be? Y, y2, y2 is going to be y2 plus branch length times math.sign of branch angle. Right, so you could use plus equals here. Okay, so we have infinite recursion here. Oh, it's because I didn't add this branch length as an argument to the to the function call. So inside the function, you need to you need to pass the new branch length in there. So it seems not to t quite be working. Let me just try something different. Oh right. So So the angle is actually relative to being flat. So we need to just add um So I'm after um after branch length, I'm going to add an argument branch angle. And be sure to to, to use that later on too, branch angle. And then the first branch angle will be, because the trunk is going up vertically, it'll be um, 90 degrees, it'll be pi over 2. So the first value we pass in will be pi over 2. Um, so I used branch angle here, and I have branch angle out here, but what this really is, so branch angle is the angle of this particular branch coming in. And this thing out here should be like the difference between the branch angle. So I'm going to rename it to branch angle uh, difference. It should be pi over 4. So when we get that, we should actually add the branch angle difference to the branch angle. So when we, right after we multiply the branch length, let's add to the branch angle the branch angle difference. So um, I, I thought, so the first time we're calling it, I thought it should be math.pi over 2 because that would be 90 degrees, oh, vertically up. But Remember, the canvas is actually, um, the y direction goes down. So the angle that, that we actually have is minus pi over 2. So I, I may, I'm going to make this minus pi over 2. And now we get the correct branch. It really looks like a branch. So let's start by making it two branches. So instead of calling draw tree once inside the draw tree function, let's call it twice. And this time the branch angle should be the branch angle minus the branch angle difference. 
So instead of actually adding to the branch angle here, I'm just going to make it branch angle plus branch angle difference and pass that as an argument here. So for the first call, I replaced branch angle. I got rid of it up here, the thing that changed it, so that I can pass it in here as branch angle plus branch angle difference. And then down here, I'm going to make it branch angle minus branch angle difference. So, so this is the right branch. And this is the left branch. So for the angle argument, I'm giving it branch angle plus branch angle difference for the right branch, and then branch angle minus branch angle difference for the left branch. So it's doing this because we computed the x and y depending upon the branch angle before this. Um, so, so we can't do it this way. But let's just get it working for now and see if we can refactor it later to simplify it. So what, what I'm going to do is um, un undo those changes. So just get rid of, uh, so make it branch angle. And then before we compute x, y, you know, the point, say branch angle plus equals branch angle difference. And then before we call the code to draw the left branch, we should, um, Say branch angle minus equals, oh, we need a semicolon, minus equals branch angle difference. That will get us back to the original branch angle. So we need to uh, say branch angle minus equals branch angle difference times 2 to get us going the other way by uh, branch angle difference. Because we set it here, and then we have to you know, set it back. And then, <coughs> then compute x, y, x, one, y, you know, the points based on the new branch angle and then pass that in here. So let's, let's, let's see if it works. Whoa. <laughs> Problem not solved. <laughs> Oh, the yeah, the x2 is from the previous one. Instead of manipulating, like changing these, we're, let's make new variables. Like var branch x1. Var branch y1 equals y2 var uh, branch x2 equals x2 plus. So we're, we're changing it from plus equals and making a new variable instead. So I'm going to do that first here. So y2 equals y2 plus. And then instead of y2, let's make it var branch y2. So the, the problem here is that we were changing the, the input variables and then changing them again. But we don't want to do that. We just want to compute something based on them and use that thing that we computed. So now when you call draw tree for the right branch, instead of x1, make it branch x1. And you can double click to select a whole word uh, to copy it and paste it. So branch x1, branch y1, branch x2, branch y2. And 
So we don't need to make this code twice because it basically does the same thing but with a different angle. So what we can do here is make this into a function and then call it twice, once for each angle that we want. So uh, let's make it here function draw or a function uh, branch. with an angle. And so what we're going to want to do is is <laughs> we want to call this function once with the angle plus the angle difference and then call it again minus it's just left over. So this will be the the right branch, this will be the left branch. And then in here, we need to use this angle that was passed in. And then pass that into here. So I, I went pretty fast. Now I'll, I'll stop. Well, let me, let me see if it works, and then I'll stop and really explain it again. Okay, now it works. So this should work and draw the whole tree. So I'm going to... I'm only going to change one little thing. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. It works. So what if we make the branch depth uh, eight?